Good morning, my dear students. This is the first part of the, my lecture on Waste Assessment and Characterization Survey, or WACS. Now, in this lecture, we are going to define WACS, then discuss the methods and the significance of WACS. So what is WACS? It is actually an acronym, which means Waste Assessment and Characterization Survey. Now, you have to take important notice of the three uh, terminologies that are within this acronym. One is assessment, which means you are going to evaluate or estimate the waste produced. Next is characterization, which means you are going to determine, identify the type or kind of waste produced, and survey to appraise or to observe or examine and record the waste produced. WAX is also referred to as waste audit. It enables the barangay or the municipality to know how much solid waste is generated and what this waste is are composed of so that you are able to determine how many kilograms are biodegradables, how many kilograms are recyclables, how about if there are residual waste and if there are electronic and hazardous waste. Now, how are we going to uh, go about wax. First, of course, is to determine the sampling method. The uh, sampling method would either be complete enumeration or random uh, or purposive sampling. By complete enumeration, it means that all sources of waste are surveyed of the waste they have produced daily. So all sources, households, commercial establishments, institutions, and others. Random sampling, which means that only a represent this, you are only going to sample a representation of the sources of waste. And then uh, the representation would not be less than 20% of the total number of waste sources. So in random sampling, it means that all sources of waste have the chance of being selected as sample population. So that when you do uh, the computation with 20%, you do not select which households or which establishment you are going to uh, survey. Then the third one is, of course, uh, purposive sampling. Sorry, it was not put in here. But it means that you purposely, purposively select what you want to survey. For example, you, want, you only want to survey the industrial waste or the agricultural waste, you know, okay, or the waste produced uh, in the market only. You call that as purposive sampling. But however, uh, even if it is purposive sampling, you still have to determine whether you will go complete enumeration or random sampling. So sampling is done daily, usually for eight consecutive days. That is based on the uh, method by uh, the World Health Organization and IAWAG, which is a Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology and Ecole Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne. So uh, they would prefer eight days uh, consecutive days, while three consecutive days is acceptable to the Environmental Management Bureau of the National Solid Waste Management Commission. Now, the eight-day survey would discard the collected waste on the first day to make sure that the waste collected in the next days were the waste generated for only a day, and this ensures a weak cycle of waste generation from the source. Okay. Now, each day collection is characterized or segregated into the different types of waste, whether these are biodegradable or compostable, recyclable, residual, hazardous, or special waste. We have two kinds of special waste. You have the bulk waste, like for example, the discarded washing machine, refrigerator, air conditioning units, while the e-waste or the electronic waste uh, examples of, of which are damaged laptops, cellular phone, computers, cable wires, and similar materials. Now, let us take as an example uh, the household uh, source. After having defined the sample size, you will now have an idea how much waste you will be dealing with. Then you are going to assign codes 
for the identified household respondents. Now, on day one, each household is provided a plastic bag in which to put the waste produced for the day. Take note of the household data, the number of occupants, the income level, if this parameter is included in your study, the date and time of your collection. The collection, uh, the collected day one waste is then discarded for it might have contained waste that have been generated the past days. Okay, now on all of the other days from day two to day eight, collect the bags filled with waste produced the previous day and provide a new bag for the next day. Note, the time of collection should as much as possible be the same from day two to day eight. Then you are going to segregate the collected waste and weigh per type. Okay. Now, the same can be done in the different sources of waste, the municipal market, commercial establishments, institutions, industrial establishments, agricultural areas. Now, for hospitals and clinics, only the mainstream waste are collected. Not included are the hospital hazardous waste, such as body parts, needles and syringe, wound dressing, blood transfusion materials, and the like. So how regular wax is done? Uh, it could be done annually to determine if we are achieving the target of reducing the amount of waste generated and the amount disposed at the disposal facility, or it could be seasonal within the year in order to get the fluctuation of waste generation so that you are able to compare the amount of waste generated during ordinary days and during special occasions or holidays such as fiestas and Christmas season. How many people are involved in conducting walks? As many as possible to get the job done in time. Now for this, uh, we need to train people at the barangay level. Here is an important point to be considered. Waste segregation at the source level will facilitate proper waste assessment and characterization because if the wastes are not segregated, you will have a longer time in segre segregating the waste before you are able to weigh each type of waste. So what is the significance of wax in waste assessment? In Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000 in Section 19 states that uh, there has to be an accurate characterization of wastes including the determination of whether or not wastes will be compatible with containment features and other wastes and whether or not wastes are required to be managed as hazardous wastes under RA 6969, which is the Toxic Substances and Hazardous and Nuclear Waste Control Act. So by, waste, by doing waste characterization, you are able to determine what are the kinds of waste and how much of the waste are produced in a particular period. Another significance of wax in waste management is that you are able to, to compute for the per capita generation rate you know, from the gathered data. And this will be discussed in part two of my wax lecture. Now, the per capita generation rate can tell us of the characteristic of the community, particularly the amount of waste generated per day by each individual. The World Health Organization sets uh, one half kilogram waste per capita uh, generated by each person to be considered as urbanized. You know? So below that, like for example, uh, 30 grams or 40 grams or 0.3 or 0.4 kilograms, that particular community is still rural. So that you are able to determine if the community is producing so much waste or whether the community is already urban or urbanizing or whether or not the community is still rural in terms of the amount of waste produced. Another significance of wax is the computation of the total domestic waste in a particular area. So in determining the total domestic waste, you have to multiply the per capita generation rate by the total population of the barangay or municipality. 
So it will give us a total. Uh, this will give us a total amount of waste generated for a certain period. For example, the per capita generation rate is 0.40 kilogram per person per day, and the total population of the municipality is 94,037 individuals. Then you have the number of days in a year, 365 days. So that if we are going to compute for the total domestic waste per day. We are going to multiply 0.40 kilogram by 94,037, which is uh, equivalent to 37.6 tons per day. And this one, uh, the uh, total domestic waste per year, uh, you have to multiply the per day uh, waste generation by 365 days so that you have 13,729,402 kilograms or 13 tons per 13,000 tons per year well that's a lot of waste to say the least so then we're going to analyze the data where do we put all this waste imagine the 13,000 tons per year does the municipality have the facility that can accommodate this amount of waste? Must all that amount of waste be disposed at the facility? Which type of waste and how much of that waste can be reduced? Which can be recycled? Which are to be disposed of? Now, these questions can be answered if you have the right wax data. Okay, we have our references from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources of the Republic Act 9003 from the World Health Organization in the Guides for Municipal Solid Waste Management in Pacific Islands and that of the lecture for the online course, the Municipal Solid Waste Management in Developing Countries.